Good morning. Wake up, it's a brand new day. Let's get down on the good news train. Good morning. Have your morning coffee with yes. Mario every Monday. Get the parents Get the three one one before the morning's done. Laugh until you cry. You can always rely on morning coffee with Mario. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Live in check. It's always something we have to say. No, I got you right. You know, Windows updates. Windows updates is always something, and we do it too here at Peg Stereo. That's why Vic is laughing. Mm -hmm. You know. Greetings, folks. I get out here in the studio at 8.30. To prepare for a 10 o'clock show, essentially. But I do start the Mac McAllister pre-show at 9. So I had everything working. What's up, Eric? 10 minutes before we start the show, something crashes. <laughs> you know, just that luck. But I fixed it, so that's the way it is. Everybody has to deal. I listened to Mac McAllister, the GNM bureau chief, who does the pre-show for us. And he was talking about the Windows updates. Right. And he was saying, you know, they, they drive people crazy, and they do. So, welcome, everybody, to Morning Coffee with Mario. Live AM Reality Talk. Today is Monday, March 26, 2018. Alexa, sing good morning. 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 Well, all right, give her a little more value. All right, Alexa, you thank go. you. There you go. Here we are. You know, I'm here every day with my artificial intelligence, Alexa. Alexa, how are you? I'm feeling light as a feather. The birds are singing, and so am I. Okay, TMI. Thank you, thank you, Alexa. And we also have my partner in crime over there, Victor Allen, who is creating those visuals. What's up, man? Yeah. What's up, folks? Yeah. There you so, go. Facebook right there. You got him. Eric, so, I see you. Tell him, hey, Vic, that's part of the new integration that we've been experimenting. Right. I got to give him a minute to, to, to at least see what you're doing. Because what Vic is doing, every week we're expanding here at Pack Stereo. And you, you may think that Vic has an easy job, but let me tell you, it's a <laughs> crazy hard job. He's working really over there, three switchers. And the other thing is that he has the perpetual challenge that when I buy new shit... <laughs> <laughs> he has to help me test it. Right. I actually feel good when I pick out stuff that we use. And I do. I think I do okay. Yeah. I do okay. But you right. show them the new stuff. We got new stuff now uh, right. that you're okay. using over there. What you got? Okay, well, along with the traditional cameras that you see over here that we're working with, um, yeah. it's, it's one of those things where I get to switch up and say, okay, here, I want to show some of the folks that are following me on my personal apps just me now this is a part so i got periscope i already got eric black from facebook he's already going hey man i'm three or four hours ahead it's kind of weird i got you so you see the display there for facebook so i got and what i'll do is this i'll switch between facebook and periscope sometimes and then i'll jump over to twitch and then show you that display of my personal app and then i may go over to big o live or then live.me so those are happening in between the shows and then I come back over here and then work our main broadcast live for live stream. And, um, of course, the Twitter chat and the feed. So I'm trying to do the multi-chatting. Multi-chatting video, Yeah, why video switching at the same time and then switching between all these. So the experiment is to see where you reach your peak. Where does it take you away from the show? If all of a sudden, and I can tell you right offhand, I better have more time on them. But for our measurement, we were supposed to deliver the show. <laughs> but they're greedy. <laughs> so They you, want attention. Right, man. Well, so so we're, we're trying to give yeah. you guys in social media attention right. while we're live. It's right. hard. It's experiment. It's hard. It's hard. It's experiment. All day. So anyway, that's what we're doing. It's all those kind of things. 
We're having fun. Everybody's busy. Miko's busy. Uh, and looking good. For those of you who got a chance to tune in on Friday, we had the I, Victor. And it was great, Vic. Uh, that's up there now. Yeah. And, uh, so they can go and watch it. So oh, yeah. The shows are coming. I, uh, just It's a bunch of stuff going on. Okay, here's a video I want to show you guys. It's called, it's, it's, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, it's on Facebook, so let me try to get it to the full. It's Saturday, and I'm actually supposed to spend some time training my artificially intelligent. Okay, here we go. Let me try, here we go, Vic. Well, it's Saturday, and I'm actually supposed to spend some time training my artificially intelligent here and uh, you know it just gets a little tedious you know like this thing here see right now they're all turned off this thing here see these things they're artificially intelligent to so don't do shit but they're artificially but what kind of shit do they do <laughs> that's part of the artificial intelligence this other robot here this thing here dances he <laughs> does hip hop dance you gotta get a roller. Really? Dance. Boy, he does. Mm -hmm. I, but you know, I'm getting around to it. Give me time. <laughs> you got the whole Star Wars series here. Boom, BB 8, and whatever this one's name is. R2 D2 and R2 D, whatever. But well, I got all of them. So we've got them here. Really? What can I say? Another afternoon teaching the joy to do stuff. Peace. Oh, it froze for a second. All right, so there we go. I don't know. <laughs> Facebook, man, don't be scaring me, you guys. What, you having problems? Well, well, then, uh, you know, stuff look like, guys. like, look, okay, this exactly. is what happens when the computer's doing what it wants, okay? Line. So you can see the computer does what it wants. It has those moments we all. Day. Look and at I'm this. Stop. Focused. Jeez. This doesn't cooperate. Yes. A desktop is becoming a problem, isn't it? <laughs> I'm telling you. And then, you know, I, <laughs> part of it is the new implement. You know, I'm using stuff and people communicate with me on Facebook. <laughs> stuff is. So we have to work this out. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have to work this out. Okay. Here's my. Here is my uh, funny video of the week. If I could get this. This is a little baby girl right here. Hold on. This is when you first meet your shadow. Do you remember when you you probably don't remember when you first met your shadow? But in this one, she meets her shadow. Take a look. You just wrong. You one of those parents that just pain, pain and punishment parents. The pain and punishment parents, man. Oh no, she's so adorable. That's just jacked up, man. Every week I post crazy videos up at Facebook. So okay, now that's just one. Now there's another one I, that I really like too. And here you got the senior ladies. <laughs> Jump rope. They jumping better than me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's only fair, but wait, wait, wait till wait till sis jumps in here. Go girl! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> she ain't getting high off the ground, but that's all right, baby. Just have to get over the rope. Look at that. Give it up, everybody. That's pretty good. What Give it up. What do you think the outcome was? <laughs> Stop. Okay, one last video I thought was particularly poignant. Can't stop watching this one. Let's give it the full screen. What you bitches want from a nigga? That's cold. I didn't put that audio in there. 
I didn't put that Man, audio. I didn't even you, know that audio was. You didn't listen. I didn't listen to the audio. <laughs> I just watched the video. So forgive me. You know what? You are, they already giving you a name right now. Starts with a P. Hey, you know, check your sources. <laughs> they go. They hey, already got so, you. Well, check it out. This reminds you some of your old girlfriends. You know what? Sound <laughs> off on a bad Monday, man. That's <laughs> look at that one. They're trying to connect the dots. <laughs> That's just not right, man. <laughs> and look at him. He's like, <laughs> give it up. That's pain, man. Give it up. Yeah, you, you missed my money. Everybody, yet. give I'm it done, up. Man. I'm done with that. <laughs> that killed my Monday. Where's my sound? Give it up, everybody. Funny moments at Facebook. Now, every moment that we do is not at Facebook is not necessarily funny. Some of them are just merely informative. Now, Vic has his own recurring uh, selfie posting series related to his excursions. And uh, there was a reason what Vic... When you were put out there with you, with you on your bike. Oh, yeah, a couple of them, man. Yeah. Let's see, I saw them here. Here's, here's one. Oh, there's a couple of them? Yeah, that's the latest one. There was one before that. But, I mean, you know. Let's look at this latest one. Yeah, the latest one. is I'm going to do a little bit, just a little bit of exercise. About to circle back and go back up that hill and head over to my father. Belated happy birthday celebration. I said, hey, let me just go on and exercise my way over there. Not that many miles. Probably round trip, 15, 20. But I may take the long route. And I'll just give you a little snapshot as I go. In the meantime, let me turn around and head back up the hills. Got to do the hill work. My problem is what's going to happen when it's time to come home because he's supposed to be barbecue. That's hard. Eat a full meal and get back on the bike. Well, you'll find out. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! That's wrong, man. Whoa! Oh! 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 That's Jack. Wee! Oh! That's Jack. Woo! Woo! Ah! Ah! It's right, all right. Watch out, watch out. What's up, boss? What's up, man? Almost got one. How you doing? Good. Those are 10 points. You know, I needed a little spot of energy. And I had to get a snack because I only had coffee this morning. Guess what I got? Boston baked beans. <laughs> yeah. I know. I never liked I'm those. I'm not a health nut. Boston I don't baked beans. Them. So I need something to eat before I get to my father's. Okay, and <laughs> this is what's gonna be. In the meantime, check it out. Somewhere behind the old form. Nice area. I keep forgetting about it. Really nice. Quiet, secluded. No bike paths, but I'm not getting to Florence. <laughs> Okay. Just want to check in. Uh oh. Boston baked bean time. Yeah. Now, Vic. Oh, these, oh man. So you get closer now. I'm, I'm there now, man. Ah. Watch out with that car. Watch out with that car. Watch out. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, there are people in there. Now, what were you using to film? How were you doing? Handheld My iPhone. father's cooking, everybody comes, yeah. I guess. Oh, <laughs> <yo, laughs> <yo, yo>, <laughs> ah. I am here. Oh, I got a whole handlebar mouth for you, too. Mm -hmm. Give it up, everybody. Not done. Tell them about what's going on, Dick. Pops was in okay, the 360 circle. Hey, he had all the ladies. Pops house. <laughs> so I, I, right he didn't want to be on video, so I, I just gave you the picture. Going against the wind, back. 
home. Man, I ate and I am tight. I'm going to pay for it soon. I had to drive by my alma mater, Crenshaw High. You know, got that cougar flow, you know what I'm saying? But there were some good days. There's some pride in those cougars. Just remember that, okay? Just remember that. All right, you guys, I'm getting really close to home going uphill. I think this is Mullen. Yeah, this is Mullen, and it keeps going up. And if you guys think I'm going to keep pedaling going up with the video recording, you got another thing coming. So give me a couple of seconds and I'll sign off. Oh, this is getting hard. I am at home. Oh, don't do this and eat barbecue. I have two they have a, they have a plates come out for the hospital. and I'm going to pay. This is hot. I'm going to pay. Dr. Allen, full excursion. <laughs> Dr. Allen, full. Rough, man. Full outing. Full, full. Hey man. Full outing, man. Yeah. And you know, like, hey, I'm not trying this is my exercise prep, man. I'm trying to prep myself for the real excursion. So, you know, it's kinda of, this is kind of laid back. It's not that it's not a thrill seeking adventure. It's just me going through I gotta exercise before I hit that spring summer season, so why not drop give the video? Give it up for you, man. Yeah. Give it up give it up again, exercise. Yeah. And just, there you go. Just catch the clock. <laughs> okay, it's time for some announcements. Alexa. God bless. Drum roll, please. <laughs> okay. That's right. Announcements back there. Announcements. Mac McAllister, our g &M Bureau Chief, is now offering online support for those who wish to go into animation or starting their own online Broadcast. Mac, who's got way too much time on his hands up there in Port Townsend, Washington, is doing all these things. And now he, besides, he has many courses. He's got a bunch of things happening. And one of the things that he's doing is he's offering to help folks who are trying to expand their horizons by doing some broadcasting. If you want to do your own broadcast, which costs next to nothing, Mac will show you out. So go take a look. Mac McCallister, the GNM Bureau Chief. You got to address a question. It's on the screen. What the hell is going on with Mario? <laughs> Laugh out loud. I'm sitting on something. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. He got it. <laughs> Do you guys know that the spring, no reaction? Okay. I just happened to be online and I was looking and I said, you know, Alexa. What's the first day of spring? The first day of spring in the Northern Hemisphere will be March 20th, 2019. So it's spring now, y'all. Spring. Yes, it is. Just be aware. So we're supposed to act different. Yep. We're supposed to now embrace the spring. Soon, young men all over the world will begin to lose their minds. So we just want you to know. So I thought about that because... You know, the weather's changing, and I said, well, we're, you know, I'm always the person who doesn't know what season it is, <laughs> you know, because first of all, they don't totally make sense to me, and right. I really have a trouble with daylight savings time and all of that, Right. but so it is, We so I lose track of time, so every now and then I get reminders of time, for example, for some reason, nothing better to do, I actually went and searched in my emails to see some of my earliest communications with some of our PAX Stereo fans, okay? So, and I found what I believe, at least as far as I can tell, it's my first email from Mac, even though it's not, can't be the first because of the way he's talking to me. Maybe he was communicating online through the bots or something. But this email from Mac is dated 8.30.09. That's a long time. That's a while, while right? Yeah. And then I also found an email from PMC from 9, 15, 11. <laughs> Bro, wow. So this is a sum of the community. Thank y'all for communicating. You know what else? It's a big deal. 
Hey, why don't you about to say, hey, ma'am, many blessings and prayers. PMC can't join us today because he's attending, uh, I think, a funeral of a family member. I got your message, man. I hope all is well, man. Just wanted to give that shout out to you. God bless you, PMC. Weather report. Alexa, weather. Currently in Los Angeles, it's 56 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly sunny skies. You can expect more of the same today with a high of 70 degrees and a low of 52 degrees. Okay, yeah, and then we'd like to better. check on the weather of our friends. We just mentioned PMC right in Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. Let's try that one. Alexa, what's the weather in Pittsburgh? Alexa, what's the weather in Pittsburgh? Right now in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's 44 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Throughout the day, you can expect more of the same, with a high of 54 degrees and a low of 35 degrees. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's try something more exotic. How about this? Alexa, what's the weather in Cancun? Currently, in Cancun, Mexico, it's 81 degrees oh. Fahrenheit with partly sunny skies. Uh. Today, you can expect mostly sunny weather, with a high of 83 degrees and a low of 75 degrees. Man, okay, all right. Man, Alexa's been helping me out more and more lately, so I'm getting used to her. Thank you, baby, thank you. Now, upcoming schedule, we got the full Monty. <laughs> I'm just kidding. we got everything this week, the regular schedule. Tomorrow night of the Quiet Storm, the theme is celebrating old school players with funky attitudes. I actually got music for that thing. Let me read it again. Celebrating old school players with funky attitudes is the musical theme. Tomorrow night's Quiet Storm. Quiet Storm. <laughs> what could I say? It's the rum. And then on Friday, we still have, I don't, I'm still not sure what I'm doing on Friday. Big, we got the I, Victor. You got any idea what's coming up on Friday? Yeah, man. We're going um, to gonna have that part two. That part two, if everybody, uh, I didn't even give the numbers on it, but it was a real good response on the video gaming. That was part one. Couldn't squeeze it all in. There was a lot more in there. So we hit this area where everybody was engaged. So, But I'm not going to tell you the twist on it. I'm not going to give you exactly what that is. What's up, Chester? I see you flowing. Um, but it will be around what's first. Lifestyle, gaming, gaming, lifestyle. And, of course, relationships all spent in there, man. Mm. All right. It's going to be hot. Hey, today for the news. I got my opinion on the Stormy Daniels 60 Minutes appearance. And then we'll talk a little about that and what does it add fuel to the storm or what. Also, we'll be talking about Trump and this cabinet shuffle. Right. Okay. And what it actually means to have John Bolton as your national security advisor. So I got that coming up. In, terms, in the marijuana section, I'm going to be talking about marijuana concentrates. I took a trip to the marijuana dispensary, and I'll give you an update on what's happening at the dispensary. And to let you know, it's a little bit all over the place here in Los Angeles as I'm talking to them in terms of recreational marijuana versus medical marijuana, all that stuff. We'll be talking about that today during the Marijuana for Dummies segment. So what about you for sports and updates, Dave? Oh, man. Okay, look, we already got a Final Four. I ain't got to talk to you about that. I just got to let you know that you got three Goliaths in the mix, of course, and then you got Loyola. And there are some already opinions about, well, let's just leave Loyola where they're at. Don't put them in the championship game because they want to see the Giants battle it out. So there's some arguments on whether Loyola should go into the championship game for other reasons. Uh, outside of that, man, we... Wonderful basketball. Yeah, it is. Also, Greg Popovich, he has become the NBA spokesman, and and truly, for the reasons I, that... I know, I have to say, I love yes. this man. Just, so you already I, I would be out liking him and respecting hey. him. So it's certainly more than that. Yes. I have another level of affection for yes, him you do. and respect. So I, I just do, as right. a person who been confronted... A person when confronted with troubling times rises to the occasion. Yes, yeah, I agree. Wonderful. So, so we're, we're just going to spot check it as it relates to, you know, just kind of let you know what's up. Um, on the other side of it, we're going to talk about who's going to be the MVP as it relates to the final four. You have your top scorers 
Vegas will probably say, here's the team that's going to win. But we're going to see if we can predict who will be the MVP. And then following after that, there's some trends. Somebody's playing volleyball, and they got kicked off the team because their Instagram was a little bit too... I was trying to find the damn pictures. You can't. You can't. The con- their account is closed. Oh, because they closed... They closed their account. But, like I said, that's trendy. Michael Bennett... The paraplegic shove a year later. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And then I'm just giving a shout out if we can't squeeze it in. Montrez Harrell, LA Clippers. Stick around, I'll tell you all about that. Hot picks, Snapchat influencers. And the influence is not just necessarily the followers, it's the influence of the market and what's new lately. That's all I can tell you. That's it, man. All right. Well, it's going to be a good show today, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Full show today. Membership update, you guys. Thank you very much for continuing to join Pack Stereo at the website, packstereo.tv. We are now have 4,952 members, almost 5,000 members at packstereo.tv. At packstereo.club, the club Pack Stereo, we have 2,418 members. So it's growing. We want to thank you again for that. All right, get ready to get into that slideshow animation. But first, as we now are doing with the help of my artificially intelligent friend, we now have the birthday roundup. Alexa, could I have the birthday roundup? Today's birthday stars include playwright Tennessee Williams, born 1911, Star Trek hero Leonard Nimoy, born 1931, the legend Diana Ross, born 1944, rocker Steven Tyler, Born 1948, and actress Kira Knightley, born 1985. Additionally, today in 1830, the Book of Mormon was first published. And now we have the play. Wow. Here's the latest slideshow animation featuring the photos that Victor did, Victor and me. You know, when Victor's in the picture, Miko took the picture. That's right. <laughs> that was That's that. exactly. So here's last week's slideshow animation featuring my wonderful friends and associates. Be right back.
Give it, it up. Slideshow animation, I do it every time we have new photos, and we have them pretty much every week. Uh, and that latest one, man, is hot. You know, Miko with that Captain America. And by the way, that Captain America shield, thanks to my brother Michael, who's the avid comic book, my brother Michael. Right. Uh, who, like me, is a physician. And like me, has some excesses when it comes to his hobbies. So if you've ever seen a grown man, 60-year-old, <laughs> Buying $100 worth of comic books. That's a tight, <laughs> that's a tight shield, old man. <laughs> yeah, you like that shield? Right there. There it is. There's the shield. It's a real collector's item. Yes, it is. It's he great. would be aghast that I have it out, but we're using it. We're using it, Mike. We're using it, Mike. So it's different. But I think we'll give it up to my, my big brother, Michael. Thank you, Michael, for giving me the shield. I think, you know... Um, I have to admit, there are those areas, you guys, because you guys, you know, Pax Terry is Victor and I, and we have Miko there with us, so it's Victor and I doing the technical stuff, and Miko's there helping us with the hosting, and she, she's also, you know, starting to produce more and more, and totally active in the eye, Victor. Uh, so it's just really us three, but in terms of the writing and the administrative stuff, that's all Victor and I. Uh, interesting enough, Sometimes it seems to me that my job around here is just to buy certain stuff and put it out there in front of us. It really, I, that's what it actually feels like when I discover it. You know, I, I discover certain things. Right. And I go, uh, let me put this in front of us and play with it and see what becomes of it. So it is with the phones. I, I saw a movie with a guy using a phone that was out of service just to get on the internet. I tried it. Now, Victor, how many phones do you have? Um, you have three, right, and a pet tablet? Yeah. And I have five in the tablet. Tablet, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a lot of phones, and we use them to hit all the social media. That's why we have so many things up. But the latest thing, Vic, is you getting into the online gaming. We are now interacting with the Twitch world. Amazon bought Twitch. Right. Twitch is a gaming site, but they're expanding to have creative content. Pac Stereo is really attempting to be the lead contributor for creative content, and that we're trying to go to Twitch weekly, at least a couple of different shows live. We go there with Morning Coffee. We also go to Twitch Live with I Victor. So we've been doing a lot of stuff. But Vic, that latest thing showing you mm -hmm. and the gaming, so. <laughs> Victor's it. gaming, you guys. How's that coming? Hey, look, Miko gave the true. Okay, Miko blasted me rightfully, and I and I always say, don't fake it. And I knew it was going to be a place where I'm. I'm literally saying this not to just pump pump her up. That's her world. She knows it like we work the apps and the integration. So we had a lot of followers, you know chime into that because that's kind of part of the culture you know it's to me i would say it is more if if you're not dating someone you're online with someone right <laughs> and you you're either trying to hook up or you gaming everything else is just talking about other people so the gaming world i like the the experience we're going through because we're going to hit you this. hook it up <laughs> no nah, man they're not, they're not going to hook up with first of all it's called penetration. Uh, that what it's called. <laughs> it's called, called penetration. Oh, that sounds it, it, it call, It's called penetration. Well, it looks like you're getting attention. Yeah, but you know what? But you know, no, no. You but, penetrate that world. No, no, no. Let me tell you what's happening. In Twitch, it is so brand new. They're cultivating. So when you cultivate a community, you're literally going probably a year from now. They'll be having all this other integration outside of the, just the gamers. We're right there doing the new content while catching up with the gamers. So it's a little bit reverse. So we're enjoying it, man. But, you know, you got Miko. She's the diva. So if there's a pack serial gaming thing, she's the link. And do you see, the, if you check her Facebook and how many games she knows when, after we did the show, <laughs> when you go see her, you go see her link, how many games. I was going, I got a lot of work to do. She knows. She got history, man. Got history. 
Well, like I can say, take it out more and more, yeah. more and more. Hey, you guys ready? Uh, let's see. Oh, you ready for some news? Maybe. Wrong jingle. Life is sounding good, though. <laughs> yeah, you know. Hey, look. <clears throat> It is a segment that you do cover, right? That's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. Time for the good news. The bad news. And the other shit. Good news, bad news, other shit. If any day could be an example of that, it would be today, ladies and gentlemen, because it is it is exactly that. It's good news, it's bad news, and other shit. And first of all, the good news. What a wonderful weekend in terms of political activity. How inspiring to see the youth of this country take to the streets and lead. And let me remind people, it's not the first time that this has happened. Similar situation occurred in Vietnam, dealing with the Vietnam War, where, again, you had a bunch of the older folks who were willing to go along and the younger folks whose efforts and activism actually led to the end of that war. So, again, for people like me, it's refreshing to see this and a reminder that there lies within us a spirit of activism, even though Time and age tends to diminish that light, and so the parents tend to be comfortable, I guess. But take a look, you guys. You know, still getting the estimates in. Okay, Vic, let me look at some of the stuff I was getting, because I was trying to get the actual final estimates in. But this March for Our Lives could have been the biggest single-day protest in Washington, D.C.'s history. And that's a big deal, because when you think of the protests, including civil rights, the famous speech, all of those things, different different numbers, though, when you look at this, and especially in these days of social media, where you get the word out, because the kids got the word out. People estimate over 800,000. Right. Over 800,000 protesters attended. Wow. They said that this was bigger than the inaugural Women's March, which brought 500,000. You were wondering what was the next biggest thing. So, man, 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 man. So take a look. We want to, again, salute the kids. Give them a little bit of... Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Because, first of all, they're doing it. <clears throat> oh, here's my numbers. Let me give you the other numbers to give you an example for comparison, Big. The March for Our Lives, over 800,000. The inaugural Women's March, 500,000. The 1969 famous demonstration against the Vietnam War, 500,000. Yeah. The Million Man March, depending on who you believe, between 450,000 to 1.1 million. Right. Depending on who you believe. But the famous, the March on Washington, 1963, that was only 250,000, but at that time, record setting. Yeah. So you can see this is really a big deal. Wow. Now, every reaction to this has not been good. In fact, a bunch of it has been bad. Rick Santorum, oh, Republican, oh, suggested that oh, the students should learn CPR. Oh, Lord. <laughs> now, as a physician... An emergency pediatrician, who unlike most of you has actually had the opportunity to do CPR countless times in life-threatening situations, it is not even something most physicians do well, okay? That's why it's reserved for a small group of physicians, because they, unless you're doing coding and resuscitating someone on a regular basis... Guess what? It ain't something you want to pull out the hat every three to five years, okay? <laughs> All right? Right. So the idea of teaching, that's a joke. That's a joke. I, As I said, CPR, they make physicians do it and get certified in it. And to go around and ask a bunch of them, and I can guarantee you, 
about 85, 90% don't ever want to be in a situation where they have to provide CPR. It's a small minority of doctors who do those kinds of things. Go on, Vic. No, my, 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 my question became um, not even a question, observation. They said, have you ever, you know, from the medical perspective and other doctors chiming in and said, have you seen what they call try, approaching a CPR pro AR-15, you know, assault weapon, as it hits his target and then you respond. He says, you literally are not thinking of the CPR. You're literally seeing the demolition of someone's body right there and everything's hanging out and everything's destroyed in this sense. So the part that gets me is that you wait for the rush of the stupidity to hit and you just go, well, we know Trump already says what he says. Rick couldn't help it. Rick had to go there. And so, for, so for Rick, for, for Rick, he is so busy on this other side of what he wants to say. Look, you know, you need to get involved. In our, and I'm going, ask Rick the last time he stood over somebody in the midst of a, an assault attack and witnessed it while trying to survive and then go, <laughs> wait a minute, CPR. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. He's it, it's, and I can tell you, it takes years of training just to grow the cojones go, man. to handle it in real life. Okay, I mean, you know that is a stressful thing. I can't imagine it, man. To make and you have to know you're the best person for the job, and your life is in your hands. What a horrible thing to do to an untrained person. People don't understand, especially when confronted with that. And what's so funny? It's not funny. No. But what's so terrible about it all is that usually you're confronted in these situations with multiple tragedies. And I've dealt with a lot of death, a right. lot of death. Right. Like I tell people, I know death very well. I smelled his breath. Right. But I usually got him almost every time, right. one at a time. Right. One death at a time. Even though a county hospital in a horrible night, you could have two or three. <laughs> okay. But usually when I had to deal with death, it was one at a time. I can't imagine 5, 10, 15, 20, or something like where there's 50 shot, dying people. Yeah. Hey, look, no. <laughs> I dealt with it. I'm a L.A. County, USC, one of the most prestigious medical centers in the country. I ran the pediatric ICU, and I can't imagine. That, that degree of death coming at you that fast. And believe me, I've seen death coming fast. That's incredible. Hey, look. I, my, how you doing, Ray? I got you, man. I see you. Uh, love it. Thanks for joining, man. And thank you also. Look, the part that he, he doesn't get is that who wants to think about after the attack, <laughs> after his, and engaging in the attack, that you're going to go, just give me my moment now. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to go over there and do CPR. You're literally in what they call a, a war zone. And how he's thinking is, this is the part where I said, you know who voted for him? I said, you know, remember, this was your governor. What was it Pennsylvania? I can't remember what where he was a governor at. Oh, the, the, this is who you voted in. I'm not saying he is not intelligent. I'm saying he had the idiot box on. And that was the idiot box comment. Now, that doesn't mean that he doesn't have some, you know, intelligible conversation. But he just laid waste to being trending. And he did, he did a favor where Trump goes, I'm not saying anything. I'm not, oh, I'm not jumping. He was a senator from Pennsylvania. Right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Former was, governor, I think, also. I'm trying to see. Is that CSC or governor here? Yeah, I mean. Republican Party, senator. I thought he had another office too. Yeah, he's he's. Oh, you know he, he, he ran for public. He ran for, for president. president. Two thousand. That's what I remember yeah. him from. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, so. obviously an idiot. <laughs> there's a bunch of idiots, and I'm, you know, there's also a bunch hey, of man. people that it's amazing the lack of guts it shows you. See, I used to wonder when I was young and I was studying history. 
I never could understand how Hitler took control of Nazi Germany. Easy. Now I get it. Yeah. You get a cult of person. Would you ever thought that Trump would have pulled this off and have the whole GOP kissing his ass? Right. This is how Hitler came to power. You get a cult of person. Imagine if Hit if Trump went online today and said, it's the blacks right. or the Jews. Right. That 30%. Right. <laughs> they start loading their weapons. Right. Because they've been ready to do that. That's their whole cult and legacy too. Yeah. So what if he did that? So now you can understand because... I'm trying to understand how Hitler took control of Nazi Germany, to me, always made me think of a society gone mad. Now I understand how societies go mad way better because I'm living in one. Right. And watching stuff occur that you would never have imagined. So again, yeah. here we are today. So that's it's Richard Santorum. Okay. Uh, additionally, by the way, so we might as well finish up on this, uh, the president is yet to really respond to any of these things. Are you more specific to the march or? Well, to the march. The march. There are those things and Stormy Daniels, and we'll talk about Yeah, that. There are those things for which he, um, you know, is quiet. On a good note, you guys, first of all, there's a teen, a teen, a quiet teen that they say who rescued uh who rescued 17 mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Rescued yeah. 17 people in the Harvey flooding. And because of that, he's winning the National Citizen Award. I, I thought I had a picture of him. I guess I... Well, maybe here it is. Yeah, that, it's here always... He is. Here he is, you guys. Always good, man. 17 years old. You yeah. know, say 17 people. Wow. You know, and quiet. You know, quiet. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. And so they have the people that are talking. Let's give it. Just give some love out. Yeah, man. Yeah. Boy, boy. Unsung. Virgil Smith. Got to give him props. Seventeen. It's hard. To, it's hard to just get one. <laughs> okay. Got to give him props, man. No, he actually he's thirteen. Wow. And he rescued seventeen people. Wow. See. What does that tell you? I was kind of big at 13. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't rescue those. No but look at the size of him. He's a nice, big, healthy yeah. young man. Yeah. And look at him. That He looks like a, a quiet, yeah. calming spirit, doesn't he? Yeah. Thank God the police ain't after you. <laughs> so anyway, that's another thing. Got to give it up yeah. for him. Okay. Uh, other stories. Black Panther. Officially the biggest superhero movie in the U.S., Box office history. It's, yeah. I mean, the, the biggest superhero movie. Right. It just got knocked off its shelf by Pacific Rim. So look how long that run has been. Man. Oh, man, it's the leading over the weekend. Oh, weekend they, had, right. they had more viewers over the weekend. Look, man, I got to give them props. Look how many weeks Panthers been sitting number one every weekend. Every weekend. For weeks. Yeah. For weeks. What's and up, Ricky? Give it up, you guys. Yeah. I got to get some clothes. See, I, just, I wore my cap, my Captain America. I don't have any Panther stuff. I'm ordering. I'm ordering some stuff. It'll be next month probably because it's on demand. Oh yeah. Gotta figure out what you want to wear. I actually have. I have some Black Panther stuff, but it's on the back. Well, I tell you what. I need it on the front. What? What? How big will it be during Halloween? Oh, every we all everybody. Now, of yeah. course, that means you're gonna see every version of <laughs> Black every, Panther. Everybody. Fun. Black Panther with the beer belly. <laughs> That's jacked up. And the man tits. <laughs> you know what? You have every kind of Black Panther. That, that is, might be me. That is just wrong, <laughs> man. Be, I'm leaving that the alone. Black Panther. Some Black Panthers you're not going to want to see. Oh, you're not no, going to no, see. No, you're going to no, say, uh, no, man. Don't be, don't be it. Don't be it. Okay. Okay, so commentary on the president because now we got a deal. Like every week, I got a deal with the weekly Trump disaster update. Okay. Now, the weekly Trump disaster. And. You know, first of all, I don't know. I, it was the most await. It was the most anticipated episode of sixty minutes in some time for me. I can't remember. It's been a while. Stormy Daniels goes on sixty minutes. They make some deal. I don't know how they work it out, but so Anderson Cooper mm -hmm. is the one who interviews her. He's on CNN, you know. Oh, but yeah. I don't know how with their contract. Great. But anyway, he comes over to do the interview. And, you know, 
The question I bring up, I said, well, does she add fuel to the storm? Really? I was kind of, I've, I was really kind of unimpressed. Anderson Cooper did his best. He did his absolute best to try to keep it from being just a tabloid kind of a news report. Because what happened is you didn't really get any new information at all, first of all. That's the first thing. So you got no new information except except for one or two salacious points, like that she took a picture mm-hmm. of the spank Trump's butt or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. So other than that, who, who gives a shit about that? But other than that, right. you didn't really learn anything else. I will give Anderson Cooper, like I said, credit because... It was really his professionalism that kept the, the interview from deteriorating into something else. But in terms of really bringing any insight, essentially none. So it was really kind of, to me, anticlimactic. What and, would you expect based on them going to court? How much more would you think that they would want to say, hey, look, we could talk about this. You know, we could talk about this. Not much. Well, not much more because... I watch enough of the programs and see her attorney, Avenatti, mm-hmm. and he says it all in mm-hmm. terms of confronting Trump. Yes. He actually gets in their face. He's trying. Challenging He's them. Trying I know they, they're pissed off. He's all in their ass. He uses the media well. He's, so, go, he's trying to go to him yeah, so he can respond. They're doing it. So, yeah. And they're doing they a good it, job man. of it. Yeah. They do, they're doing a good job of, of getting underneath the skin. And because I dislike the president so much, I can't help but be a little tickled at times. But I think it's dangerous. See, the problem is, you guys, that the president, to me, is a scary thing. Because he's an idiot. And with the recent firing... You know, the recent shakeup in his staff, McMaster, is, so his national security advisor, he dumps them. Right. And he brings on John Bolton, who's a certified idiot. Go look. There, like I said, there hasn't been a war he hasn't liked. Okay. Right. You talk about Eddie, he's a man who likes any war. He wants preemptive strikes on Iran, North Korea, everybody. Well, so what's amazing, though, is that he's kind of hawkish against the Russians, too, and that's where he and Trump have a potential falling out point. So, but the big thing is that he has Trump's ear, and because of the, inc- the upcoming stress points, there's potential for great disaster. With John Bolton speaking in his ear, whispering to Trump, crazy things could happen. When you get a dog, a rabid dog cornered, they tend to strike out. And that's what I'm afraid of. I'd say before I wanted the president confident and comfortable and believe in the hype right until the day you slammed him. Okay, if he gets rid of all of his people that he says, I have great teams, and that's not that many people left, isn't it by default that you run into people like John? <laughs> I'm just going. If everybody well, it doesn't have to be for him, it is. In other words, if you're, t- if you're trying to find people who, who have similar. But nut attitudes, by then default. you're going to get nut people. Yes. By the way, the other two attorney, the attorney husband wife team, mm-hmm. De Genova, who was supposed to join, and I was so look, I love it when he hires incompetent people. So every attorney I know couldn't wait for this. this I know they was this horrible lawyer team that you can't wait to get in court. Can't wait to get them in court. <laughs> You know, I've heard that about from attorneys about Gloria Allred too. Right, I've heard right. from a bunch of attorneys who told me she is not anything in court. <laughs> but, but interesting when you hear about this stuff. So Trump was going to get these people. Suppose there's a conflict of interest because they represent another person, right, on a different issue, right. But he also probably was told by the other attorneys there's no way they're going to work with them, right. So that's the problem, Vic. You got him surrounded with a horrible legal staff on his own. The ones that are appointed, like Don McGahn, Don McGahn, he's supposed to represent the White House and not him in particular. Mm-hmm. He's going to be gone soon. In terms of his individual counsel, he, he, he fired the lead counsel that was Dowd, uh, well-known, and had they, they have been unable to replace him. And so now heading into this crisis moment, mm-hmm. you have the president, with an idiot hawk national security advisor mm-hmm. 
a reduced legal staff, right. feeling that they have no power over to control the president at all. Right. And you're heading into a crisis period dealing with the, the Iran deal. Right. And also a supposed meeting with North Korea, which John Bolton, your national security advisor, says we should preemptively nuke them. Right. <laughs> Bomb them, whatever. Right. Okay. So that's going to be a crisis point to hear how Trump approaches his meeting. Now, a bunch of other folks are writing me saying that they should just take Dennis Rodman <laughs> with them to North Korea, watch a bunch of basketball, and then everything will work out okay. You'll see some detente. <laughs> you know, come wrong. to some uh, meetings. But there's, there's no question, you guys, in all seriousness, this is a crisis time. And I, and I do think that it behooves us to have the president comfortable. I don't want to make, I'm so worried that he could do something crazy. People, one of the big conversations that went on with me on Facebook is I put up some comments that Roseanne Barr said, who do you want? You want Pence? I said, yeah, I'd take Pence over Trump. I don't think Trump is sane. <laughs> Pence is a nut too, but I don't think he would nuke North Korea. I'm sorry. Right. You know, say, well, he has a, people say, well, he has a, I said, he won't get any long, no matter who they put in office when they remove Trump. And Ryan is the person that's really supposed to be, ultimately, I think, because I think Pence is going to go too. Pence is next, then Ryan. No matter who they do, they're not going to get anything accomplished. They couldn't get anything accomplished controlling everything. <laughs> They could get nothing accomplished. What makes you think they're going to get anything accomplished without Trump? No. So whoever gets to be president, once they impeach Trump, they're not going to accomplish anything. They're going to just ride out the time to the next probably Democratic candidate. So that's what I think. So, yeah, no. I think Trump is number one, right. the most dangerous. After that, there's a gap. Right. Then there's people like Pence, okay? But the, right. there's no question, our country's in sad shape. Okay, who's worse? Hold on. And things I'm going to give you three rough. names. I'm going to give you three names. Philippines, Duarte, <laughs> North Korea, Trump. Given them that they all have the ultimate number one power at their control. Who, if Trump was in North, North Korea, Korea. <laughs> he might not be that different. Who Let me put it like this. They Who? both Duterte and Kim Jong-un yes. are killers. If Trump wishes he could be king, right. he might be a killer too. But what? right now, what? I put them in this order of being Duterte, Kim Jong-un, then Trump. Okay, because Duterte is crazy. Putin. Kim Jong-un acts crazy, but isn't. Putin is a fox. He ain't crazy at all. So okay. he is a fox. Okay. So I just or, need to... or a wolf. Putin is not crazy at all. He knows exactly what, what he's doing. What? He is smart as shit. You yeah, don't, he does. Well, you don't he, get to rise up to he's the been KGB. In, he's been there. Oh yeah. So yeah, he's he a whole different level. Yeah, man, Trump is an idiot who knows nothing. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He knows nothing. He doesn't read. Come on, he knows nothing. So I'm sorry. I spent my whole life struggling to learn and gain and get right, better. Right. And here comes an asshole who doesn't want to learn, and he's president. You you elected an idiot. Well, he's an idiot. Well, let me just say this: Is that your first? Is that our first president who we feared with the button? No, feared on the button because it's not about the no. Idiocy. But the button's only been here <laughs> since 1945, so you've only had a number. Of, you had Kennedy. Right. The, the biggest one would be your Cuban Missile Crisis. Crisis, that's right. Okay. That was close to. Right. Very close. That, no. Mobilization. There's been other crises, even with North Korea. Right. Oh, no, I got the, the, the ship that they, United, they United, took off. They, they took. And so there's a bunch of things. But okay. All right. How rough times. Yeah, everybody. absolutely. Everybody. That's the good news. Bad news. Well, let me find my favorite transition. Drunk in a smoky bar. 
Mm -hmm. Drinking an Imperial Porter mix. We're going to come right back for Marijuana for Dummies. It's all about the concentrates, what they are, and what you need to know. We'll be right back. When you walked away, it was the saddest day that the world has known. Shattered my heart and left me with pieces of a broken home. Now you say. Bar drinking an Imperial Porter mix free. Free music for you, Creative Commons. Part of that movement that makes this music available to you free legally. Give it up for Laswell. Remember, you can go and get that music at dig.ccmixter.org or just simply search Creative Commons and Google it. Learn a little bit about the movement and they'll direct you right there. Go and check out Laswell and Love Shadow, two of my favorites, and get a bunch of that free music. It is indeed wonderful music. Ready to talk about some weed? Maybe. Times are a changing, but some things stay the same. You start each morning with a cup of coffee every day. Maybe hit the snooze, turn on the local news. But nothing good comes from a one sided point of view. Friendly. Marijuana for dummies. You know, like I said, I feel bad about the title. Because I didn't, it was just that it was catchy and then the numbers were different when I, you know, it's not my fault you guys respond to titles like Marijuana for Dummies. But so we went with that and then Victor added the subtitle, Resisting the Myths Education. <laughs> That's what we do. We resist the miseducation of marijuana. Okay, so a couple things to talk about today. I'm going to get to a minute. 
uh, the whole uh, the subject of marijuana concentrates and what they are and what you need to know. But first, let me just share some uh, recent experiences with you. My medical marijuana card expired. I always let it expire. If you don't let it expire, I think it was $35 or $50. But if you let it expire, it's $50. That's all I know, okay? If you get it within the first month, I think they renew it for $25. But if not, it's $50. So, of course, me. My card expir expired in November. <laughs> So, because of all the recreational marijuana stuff, I didn't feel rushed. But I knew to renew my card. Now, why? Because in my previous experiences in Las Vegas, I, had, I learned that places are going to treat medical marijuana and recreational marijuana differently. And because of that, I was just recommending to people that they have the card. For example, when I was in Las Vegas, and I went to their, a dispensary, one of the prominent ones in Las Vegas, uh, this past summer, they were out of recreational marijuana, and I had and I had to use my card. They actually had like two separate check-ins. They had like over here you check in as a recreational user and you had to check in, and over here you check in as a medical marijuana. That was then. What's happening here in Los Angeles is that it's being rolled out incrementally, so not everybody's doing the same thing. I went and looked at some of the online delivery places, which I'm going to try just to see. They have like an Uber Eats version of marijuana where you Uber. They, it's not really Uber, but they, right. they copyright infringement, whatever. Right. They're, they're bringing you weed. Delivery services of marijuana abound. And, and so I'm, I'm going to try some, ultimately. But uh, I still have it. Okay. But there are differences in all the places. Okay, so at my place right now there is no difference. They said that it has they haven't hit them yet. So they they're working on the computerized system, but for right now no one's paying the tax. <laughs> right. Everything's the exact same. Right. At my dispensary. So there's okay. no tax, nothing. But in a minute they said it's coming cuz some other places have a tax. And it's a different price whether you're medical marijuana right. or recreational. Right. Okay, and it also makes a difference when you travel, like I said, so keep that in mind. Now, uh, so I got my card. I had to pay $50 because I let it lapse so long. And then I went over to my same place, found out they were doing nothing different. My, 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 my regular dispensary was over there by USC, even though expanding everything. Okay, and so because I was out, I wanted to stock up. So I wanted to share with you guys some of the stuff. Nice bag, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> dude. Oh, There's a lot of weed. Wait, man. wait, wait. You gotta see. All right, come on, wait, wait. What? What's, what's the bag? Bag in the so, bag. Look at the bag. Well, you got the weed store. Oh my God, man! You know, if you go to the west side, God, they find you. Man, so I'm gonna leg more. <laughs> wait, but. but you know, the weed is so big. I don't know if you can show this. This is some of the stuff I want to. Oh, so, this go okay. I got it. Just be patient. You're gonna have to kind of lift up a little bit. So you know, just do your thing, and I'll I'll just oh, go ahead. Do your thing. It's yeah. It's the whole, oh, it's the whole point. Okay. Whole no problem. Hey, hold on. Watch yeah. this. Watch this. We'll get it. Oh, there we go. Zoom right, in on that right, table right, now. Because <laughs> here's the thing, and all the strains. Okay. Basically. Normally, the, well, the price of the weed has gone down. This represents actually two ounces, okay, of weed. Two ounces here, and then these are four quarter ounces of weed. Now, let me tell you about this weed. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wait a minute, it's a mystery, man. Well, it's different kinds. Now, why okay. is it why so much weed? All right. Because I tend to go in there. Now, I did, and, and by the way, I did some, I, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know who my audience was then. Okay. 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 By that I mean, it occurred to me that I don't know what percentage of the people that watch this are marijuana users and their age range. Okay. So I did go get some statistics on the typical 
week. Well, I'll be reporting that next week. I have some actually some reports, some government reports. Okay. On the two of the who are actually using. Okay. Who are the adult marijuana users? Because I must admit, I don't, statistic, I don't know who I'm talking to. Okay, you guys may be 50, you could be 25. <laughs> but anyway, so I did see that less than 4% of people spend what I spend on weed. I would be classified as a high volume user. Which means you're a happy person. <laughs> That's less all than right. 4% spend <laughs> like what I. Anyway, so I went in there and knew, it says I needed to stock up. I knew I was going to get approximately two ounces. Now, in the past, an ounce was running approximately $205. Got you. Okay. Right. I was able to get two ounces for $365. Okay. So, I showed you the price has dropped. Okay. And then with that, they also gave me two free edibles. This edible right here. Good. Good. All right. Got you. This is the... Candy, I love these. This is the candy, like they're like the chewable sour. Right. This is strawberry sour. This is sour apple sour. Right. Okay, so those are the edibles they gave me free. And I got half an ounce of these two Indicas, Insane, and Chateau Limon. <laughs> yeah, spell and it. I got a quarter ounce of taffy. Supreme GSC, Supremo BD, and Gorilla Glue. <laughs> you know what? I don't even know what those names relate to. Okay, now these are either sativas or hybrids. I got two Indicas. Remember, those are the stronger, more potent physical ones. Then I got another ounce that's basically sativas or hybrids. Okay. Okay. So I wanted you to understand because what that's saying to you is that top shelf marijuana right now. Top shelf marijuana for you is going to be under two hundred dollars. It's now going down to around one hundred ninety bucks. Got it. Top shelf, okay, and that's with giving you some free beans and all that. Okay. Now, so I wanted to give you that heads up in the update, and also get back to the thing where I said, okay, keep your car. Now, the take home lesson. More so, is this really for the your, the people who are smoking? Not necessarily the people who are learning about the culture of what you're evaluating and saying, well, this is what we're going through. And well, okay, that's what I mean. There's some benefits legally. Right, that's what I was trying to get. Okay, yeah. part of the reason for being certified as a medical marijuana user is that you're afforded all the legal protections under HIPAA. Got you. In other words, now you have a certified disease. Right. So your job. Anybody you have to deal with legally, you're a medical marijuana user, which gives you certain rights. If you're just a recreational user, right. you enjoy none of those rights. That's That was the so thing I was getting worth to. So that's worth $50, $35 a year right. to get the marijuana card to me because of the protection that it affords you legally. Okay. Okay, if anything should ever come up. Okay. Right. So I, and, I, and I'm reinforcing that because I've said that, I, I, that that's very important to me. Okay. Okay, because it makes a big difference. You can imagine you get in dispute with your landlord, you get a dispute with your job, anything. Right. If you're a medical marijuana person, that falls under the health information, patient, you know, whatever. Got protections. It. Okay. Okay? And so you'll be covered. Now, let me tell you about these concentrates. Concentrates, for those who don't know, concentrates is, besides the edibles, concentrates is like the biggest growing area of marijuana product delivery you guys the marijuana products is crazy just already crazy with the edibles whether you want chocolate gummy bears the spreads like whoopee so now the next area is the extracts now what are extracts extracts are compounds that are made by removing the active components from marijuana right and making those into some form of a powder, gel, whatever to smoke. I now, why do it? One, and probably the biggest reason, is potency. You read estimates of marijuana potency being around 30% or so, whatever, and that's a whole range, believe me. The extracts go up above 90% potency. So even if you have some super bad weed, the extract is going to be way 
more potent. Okay? All right? So that's the first thing. Second thing is taste. Taste totally different because when you're using the extracts, they're not actually combusting. Once again, they're vaporizing. So therefore, what you're inhaling is the vapor as it vaporizes. You're not actually lighting it on fire and inhaling the smoke like you do regular flower weed. Where you fire it up, you're breathing in the smoke, and the smoke is... No, with the extracts, you're heating it up, heating up a bowl, putting the extract into the bowl, which then vaporizes. Right. So there's a total difference in taste. has more of the taste that's reminiscent of the regular vaporizer, vaporizers because it's not combusting. It also means you could take a bigger hit. So now, see, typically if you take in a hit off a bong, you're going to tend to want to cough. Because it's all that smoke, large volume, high potency. When you use the extracts, now you're getting high potency, less irritation. So you're taking bigger hits. Right. You're taking hits like on a bomb with a very high potency right? without the same tendency to cough. So it's less irritating. Okay. That's part of the reason why people like the extracts. Now, what are the cons? The cons to me, first of all, are costs. It's way more expensive. This is, this right here, what you see is a little plastic with some paper in it. This represents half a gram of an extract. What happens is they actually put it in paper. Okay, I'm gonna open this up. They put it in paper fold it up in the paper, and that's the form to which you get the extract. Now this is 18 bucks. Here you go, I'll do it again. Maybe I'll try that. Oh, you were good. Oh, I am. You were good where you were at, man. Okay. So this is paper. And then when you open the paper, can you see that? That's the extract, okay? Got this right. is what they call shatter. Now, why do they call it shatter? Because when you, it tends to break up. So you grab it, you crack it, it makes little pieces. So they call it shatter. This is an extract. Most of these are derived by using benzene to remove the THC and other things from the weed. Okay, and then they smoke that. But that's half a gram that's eighteen dollars, and people are online. They'll take that and roll it up, like you know, into a lo you know, to a little strand, put it inside a joint, which I think is counterproductive. Why did I say that? The main benefit of this stuff is the taste, and that you're not burning it. So why would you want to combine it with burning weed? If you then, when I want some flowers, I have a separate pipe with flower weed in it and smoke that. But when you're doing extract. You have to have a whole different setup. That gets you to the negative number two. The first one I said was cost. The, the second negative is setup. When you do extracts, and the other term for this, which you'll hear pop, used popularly, is dabbing. Because they take a little dab. When you use extracts, you have to have all this other shit. You got to have the special pipe with a special holder. See here? See, that goes in the pipe. Then you put the extract in here and you heat this up, boom, boom, boom. Now, it occurred to me though, Vic, and Vic will probably laugh, that I will say this is too much shit to have to smoke weed. Yeah. Now, if you're 22, you think differently. This made is what I thought of Vic. I said the exact same Mario right. at a different age would have loved this. Why? Because look at the torch. Right. I would be going, ooh-wee. So that's why young people, they get a big-ass pipe, right. a big-ass torch, right. and they're going, ah, ah yay, we. Right, you're on the other side. Now. I'm on the other side. Right. But what you do with these, and the way it works is you have to heat the bowl like this. Now, I have some left in here. So you're really heating this bowl. Then it starts, see it starts to vaporize? Then you stop.
Alexa, drum roll. Okay. Okay. Huge hit. Now what? Now I can tell you about. I don't even use bongs anymore because all I do is cough. I hit a bong. <laughs> Huge hit. What's the difference once again? Vapor. Not smoke. Vapor. Okay? So that you can pull in a big hit. Hold it like I did. I could never do that anymore for bong. I blow up. Okay? And also, high potency. The fact that you have to use all this extra shit. Okay? Not a problem if you're young. Maybe you're probably, if you're old, you might just want to roll one up. But then again, you're getting around the benefits. The benefits are, if you like it, different taste. If you like it, if you're not into smoke and want to still have the benefits, this is vaporizing the THC. It's not smoke. Right. Okay? Right. All right. And the only thing is that, again... The biggest thing, and this is that shatter, the biggest issue has to do with costs. Any questions about any of that stuff, Vic, so far for you? No, 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 not and at Vic, all. Vic, by the way, is a non-smoker, so he's, you know, he's just around me all the time, but I never, you know, Vic, I really don't share it with you that much, right? I don't... I never discuss my smoking with you, right? We no, 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 but I, so nobody you, you, really does. That's why no. when we watch the show, when yeah. you get to be part of the show, yeah, it was like we never discussed this. No, 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 it's not even. It's not that. What I'm, I'm more interested is the adapt adaptation, the way alcohol went in its direction. And if you just go look at the correlations, you go, okay, there's this. They're catching up with a market has already proven that it's going to be very financially rewarding. Now they're trying to do all these things: adaptation, legalization, uh, distribution, consumer. All that is coming in, and then you want the assurity that you still know that if it's getting stronger and getting stronger, what does that mean for people who are indulging? And so you've you got to be careful. Yeah, that's the one thing I have cautioned everybody over and over. And believe me, I'm saying this as a Long-time marijuana user. Yeah. You got to be cautious because the potency today is off the charts. Yeah. Both in terms of the edibles, the extracts, the regular marijuana. Potency is off the charts. Go slow. You know, go very slow. Start yeah. off with little amounts. This is not your father's marijuana. <laughs> okay. Well, there's some people already going like, let me put my father's stuff back, right? Yeah, yeah. This, this right. is a whole different animal. Okay. And again... Again, that's Mario Hemsley. Marijuana for Dummy Show. Times are a changing, but some things stay the same. You start each morning with a cup of coffee every day. Maybe hit the snooze, turn on the local news. But nothing good comes from a one sided point of view. Charismatic, compelling, creating a union that is telling, shining a light, shedding a glow, feeling your soul. From love arises a booming energy, sending the world a message in a bottle. There is more to show. As the love grows and kicks into full throttle, the fused unit produces a message that becomes a more powerful whole, even more powerful than the love in full. We go here.
Mancito and Silk Words on vocals. I love that track. <laughs> Man, y'all ready for some sports? A little bit. Hope they're dressed appropriately. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Victor Allen's New New Sports is unique fan-based viewer sports written and directed by the bald-headed black man. Rub his head and make a wish. This is the man the ladies have nicknamed Sexual Chocolate. And here are his sports. Remember we told you to dress appropriately? Sports bras and dark straps. That's for everybody. Remember now, it's time, and here, Nick, everybody, sports! Yeah. No, you went um, more in depth in that last segment, so you was prepared this week to really give them some, a uh, little extra on that marijuana for dummies, man. I've been putting it off because I hadn't got to the spit. <laughs> That's what I figured, man. I, I hadn't got like, to the spit. Yeah, yeah I, you know. I had to get up the rain. I had see, to get out. But you know what? Let me say this. Let me say this. <laughs> what I keep saying is, I think, isn't that part of the reality of you? I yeah. think you, to me, would have said, I didn't do it this week. Versus waiting. Because I think the whole part of this is this going like, you actually are going, I could chill. Well, I told him. I mean, I told him, but you know, Mm -hmm. mentioning it and actually really getting it is always two different things. Right. It's the fact that I mentioned that I had yet to make that trip. Yeah. Thank you, Vic. Yeah. Hey, you guys, uh, I'm going to talk about the stuff that I'm following. You know, I have to follow that weekend, that final four. Everybody was was, uh, 
kind of in suspense because let, let me be real about it. Everybody was looking at Loyola. Hey, are they going to get knocked? I didn't think they was going to make it past this fight, this Elite Eight. They did. But before I go there and get into what you already know, which is the final four, there's three Goliaths and then there's one Cinderella. Mario, already, you already covered this when they say, hey, look, sports does transcend bigger messages depending on the time and the place that you're in. And Greg Popovich is an interesting character because during the halftime or timeout interviews on court, he has very little to say and he's kind of playing. And then all of a sudden he gets into, I have to speak my piece on this. And then all of a sudden, he becomes the waterfall. So over the weekend, of course, March for our lives. The reports were how many people were attending. You see reports where they say, well, it was only 250,000. It wasn't as many as we expected. I said, this is the tradition that's looking at the numbers from the old traditional way. If you look at this map, there were similar protests globally. That's and right. their own to type. Us in so Look at us. When, right. So when you sit here and go Nigeria, right, it's worldwide. Australia, as it relates that they said you were going to get similar or Nigeria. something along the line of the same support of it. And and I say this for all of you guys who's over a certain age, who wait for TV, <laughs> who wait for the traditional. Here's the report, and then you go read it online and say, well, they only got this many people. I said that's. The, you're in that old world. They don't care if they only had 100 people there. When you go look at this map, that changes your mind. So I wanted to jump on in that just first to say applause for them taking a stance on something that's very important that they're directly trying to do an intervention with. The success is not necessarily for me to go, oh, if they don't do this, it's done. I say, I think you're getting an example of when the groundswell comes from young people, they're going to affect your margin line politicians and everybody else all right you're gonna see it so greg popovich had to go there he had to go like you know what i got to make a statement so although you see the map i have to quote what he said because he couldn't he could he couldn't stand it he said all right here he is they got him and this is only a small part of it he says how can the president of the country talk about all the things going he's going to do and then go have lunch with the nra and change it it's just cowardice a real leader would have been in Washington, D.C. this weekend, not at his penthouse at Mar-a-Lago. He would have had the decency to meet with a group to see what's going on and important and how important it is and how important our children should be to us. He not only not slammed Trump, he slammed also the politicians as they are all collectively silent on the bridge that connects them with Trump. So... He's become this vehicle where he's going, my conscience won't let me not speak. And he's going to say in his voice. And look, and I say a few things that Trump is, is going to stay away from. He's going to stay away from youth, okay, because no matter how good you are, and they call you a marketing genius in your own right, and all the analytics and all the support that you have from these groups that do the things that they do, you can't compare to the cultural shift of the, util the utilizers of all the frameworks of the Internet and what it can do when these people rally up. You guys are so far behind, you don't have enough time. First of all, because you're giving speeches most of the time. So first, I applaud that. Second of all, Greg is on the other side because he's seen some things. And what makes it really interesting, he comes from a collective of basketball players that he's had what they call a cultural shift because some of his players are international uh, uh, as far as their culture and their diversity. They come from different places. So I appreciate that was my shout out to him to say, look, Greg is going to be speaking a lot more. And here's the thing. And I'm going to say this, Mario. Is he the biggest voice to you in professional sports as a coach standing up for something? Or is there another coach who even speaks louder than Greg? Across the landscape. I'm trying to think of right now. I can't think of one. Yeah, you can't. Got to give it up to him because to have for him to show leadership in that area yeah. where other people, including people of color, right, are not saying what he says. No, they're not saying. It. Right. Right. So let's give the man his due. Right. And remember, yeah. just so you guys know, he always prefaces what his statement is about 
But he says, America still hasn't addressed its original sin. So he always lets you know that is the core of what's happened. And so I accept that. All right, let's go over to the Cinderella story, Loyola. And then how much, right off, let me just say this. They're going, they going to the next round, man? Mario. Oh, they, yeah. Now, you know they're battling Michigan. Now, yeah. Okay, now Michigan is no joke. When I say no joke, bigger, and they, they swarm. Would you prefer seeing the Cinderella, or would you want to see the usual suspects, the big Goliath universities? Do you want to see Loyola there? I, I, you know, for me, I like to see the best man win, and that I, I don't root for trends. I right. mostly observe them. So right. the, the trend of the day right. of the time is big men who can move. I watched a special on Giannis. Right. And Tito Cuompo, I hope I said it right. No, you did. You did good. Uh, man. <laughs> and the, the 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 March Madness, right, is a reminder of the same. Right, it is. Big men who are moving, better footwork. Right. Okay, but a bunch of big men who are way more agile. Right. Yeah. So that trend is coming, right? We right. see that. So Vic, no, I like to see. I have no input as to what I would like from the. March Madness. Right. I mostly like what I get to experience. Right. And I, I'm a fan based on the fact that I get the unknown every year. Right. New stuff every year. Excitement every year. Right. So we get to see. I'm I'm mostly shocked when the big ones get upset, like Duke, you know, or other folks. You get upset. Right. You know. But I think right now you had a bunch. Of, what? So the of the of the top seeds. You have two seed? number ones. You got two number ones still remain. That's Kansas and Villanova, which everybody is saying that is really the, the championship. Other, the other, in the other conferences, the top seeds were They're gone. Out. So you got a number three yeah. in Michigan and a number 11 in Loyola. Everybody's saying this. When you get the two number ones, the real game of Goliath, the best teams remaining are the next game and not the championship. And that's Villanova and, Can- and Kansas. So that's why the argument is, well, do Loyola need to be in there? So well, one of them are going to knock each other off anyway. So who would you rather see? A number one going against Michigan or Loyola? And so the arguments become Michigan more so than Loyola. But people are going, well, if they deserve to be there, if yeah, they are my it. thing is that I don't care so much that you're number one. I care for the ones who've done the winning to get there. That's right. That's so all that matters. if you're the underdog, I'm going to tend to go. Absolutely. With them, as opposed to, so I could care less about your seating. Right. I got you. All right. All right. Check it out. I got. I want to tell you guys about something. They interviewed the Michigan University basketball players and asked them, "Did they know about Sister Jean?" <laughs> and of course, no, they don't. They say we just know that she's really old. That's it. Now, ninety-eight. Yes, ninety-eight. That kind of qualifies it. Well, if you're just 90, that's when we sold. Right. 98 is really, really old. It's up there. And so I want to give you just a little snapshot of Sister Jean Dolores Smith, 98-year-old chaplain for the Loyola Chicago men's team. She's part of a group of nuns who are really retired, you know. But they represent uh, this. It's, it's, it used to be 2,000 strong. And it's about 330. Stay on the campus of Loyola. And so here's a little background on it. There are only about 330 of the nuns, including Sister Jean, on the Loyola campus. And there are roughly 180 retirees living there. That's her home. Uh, Sister Jean Pierce points out that she was a teacher for many years in California before moving to Chicago in 1961 to teach and then serve as an administrator at Mundeling, Mundeling College, an all-women's school founded and run by the BVM, of course, order. The college was known for its activists and its work to advance women's rights. Now, I'm not making fun of this. The picture that's in my mind is picturing Sister Jean in 1961 being on the court and this team wins. 
and a whole bunch of black men are coming up to kiss her and hug her and everything. <laughs> so the parallel is, would that be a different day and time? Now Loyola did oh, win the cha- uh, would did win their championship in '63. They do have a title. I'm just going. Imagine what this woman has seen. So in 1960, 61. Let's just say 60, 61. She was 40. Okay, so back it up even more. 19, what? 28. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to keep going backwards and I'm going, ask that woman. They probably didn't kiss her then. They didn't have nobody <laughs> on the <laughs> team. Right, right, See, right. Only a certain, there's a certain point in which they know they didn't have black folks on the team. But at that time, we're not called black folks. Uh, you know. No. They didn't have any Negroes. No, no. <laughs> you wouldn't Mark Bartle said Negro. I didn't become black till I was 13. <laughs> hey, so look. I was, I was Negro from birth hey, look. to 12. No, look. I'm not looking at the kids and within them because youth goes, hey, look, it ain't no big deal to us. From her perspective, from what she's seen and experienced, and I'm going 40 in 1960. So she was 20 in 1940. So she's seen some stuff that says, I remember there was a distinct barrier in line from, of course, African-Americans being in sports, those who are allowed, where to go socially, and now here she is being rewarded by having this motivation attached to her as Sister Jean, okay? Something that now is sticking with her at 98. So more praise to her because uh, it's, it seems like there's some higher order that's taking place here. I know you guys are going to go off on it and say, what are you trying to say? I said, it's just ask Sister Jean. <laughs> okay, just ask her. All right, now, let's get over to what, what we call the Final Four and who we think is going to be the best. And we're going to hit these picks real fast, Mario. Who we think is going to be the MVP, which means you are picking the team that you think is going to win. Let's go down the list real quick. The first we're going to is Jalen Brunson, right beneath. We can go and scroll up Jalen Brunson, he's a guard, Villanova, hometown, Lincolnshire, Illinois. Next up, Devontae Graham, guard, hometown, Raleigh, North Carolina. Moritz Wagner, forward, 6'11", hometown, Berlin, Germany. Clayton Custer, 6'1", guard, Loyola, Chicago, Overland Park, Kansas. And we are dominated by guards. Mario, pick the player before you think of the team based on position. You got three guards and a forward. Who do you think? If you had to just go, and I didn't even give you stats. Well, let me go from the back. I know I, as much as I appreciate Wagner and what he's done. He's been good. He's been very good. Yeah. Uh, not quite what I want consistently to be the lead person in this group. Okay. I'm very impressed with Clayton Custer. Yeah, small. I'm very impressed. Even though he's a little guy, because he's guts, he's, he's, he's got guts like, and he, he's nonstop. Reminds me of a John Stockton or right, right. He is nonstop. A lot of and gut checking. Just, I'm just saying, I like him. Right. So, I like Wagner too, but still, I got to put these guys above him. Right. At Kansas, Devontae Graham, he's doing a hell of a he, he's, hell of a job he's, too. He's. Mm. Even though I guess I think for me, and then going here, Jalen Brunson, Brunson. Well, Villanova is the team I expect to win. But my of this group, my favorite player, I think, is Custer. <laughs> so you going with the underdog? Well, you know, I just maybe because I've seen I, it has to. There's biases built in because you can't watch every game, right? You know, or you could try, right? But I keep seeing the Loyola. And I'm I'm a believer. Okay. And then of course, you know, sister. <laughs> I knew you was gonna go there. Charles Barkley had to give it up. Yeah, yeah. Look, and let me just say this, and, and, and just for me, at, at, at a moment in time where I'm I'm literally sitting here going, if I had to pick the player, I pick the player who has the greatest leadership skills. I like Devontae Graham because of what he does athletically, but Jalen Brunson happens to be the floor general. Just how he, his awareness and what he does for his size is hard not picking him. He just, he's hands down the best leader of the group based on what he does all around. I mean, literally, you see it and you go, he's ready for the NBA. 
He doesn't have to jump over you. He just his his savviness of what he can do. I mean, literally can back you down and say, put somebody on me close to my size. I'm a lefty and I got some beef on me. He just knows how to manipulate you a different way. Whereas the other players are more like jump shooters and they tend to run to spots to get open a little bit, maybe quicker. I like them. So I'm picking Jalen, which means I'm picking Villanova. But if I had to pick a team, I would like to see Loyola get there in the final, but it looks like Villanova, we're both on the same page, man. So moving on real quick, man, I want to go to what I call trending up or down. And you tell me, Mario, is it trending up or trending down with you? Uh, it's really simple. You may have to refresh your page just in case. If not, I'll just go ahead and say the line and you just tell me if it's trending up or down. Former Seahawk and Philadelphia, Michael Bennett arrested. <laughs> okay. For an event that happened last year's Super Bowl. Right. Where he bumps into a paraplegic. Didn't knock him over. It was a woman, 67 years of age. And all they have is the claim. And Vegas is already on top of it. And the way the story is framed, he's guilty. Before they can actually say, can you show us proof? And did it really happen? Now, in the excitement, it's about him rushing on the field to congratulate his brother because New England Patriots won the Super Bowl. They're going his a year later. Are they framing this around a very outspoken man and saying, look, we're going to give you, we're going to usher in a profile on you, even if you're innocent. Because if you did bump them, you still got problems. The problem with this, and like most of the stories, we don't have enough information to make a decision. So everybody makes a decision based on their individual biases, right. which gets to the biases of America. He's a big black man. He's guilty. Period. That's yeah. the way America deals. Yeah. You know, I said it before, it's just like the same way we managed to be able to uh, capture and arrest every white mass murderer right. and take them into custody. Right. But if you're black and selling cigarettes, an arrest means you die. Right. So that's just the way it goes. They kill black people. Right. They shot a, the, the kid. They shot him 20, 20 times. times in Sacramento. Three, four, four, five, five. Well, right. six times wasn't and enough. Wait a minute. Wait 20. a minute. And, and just to add to it. So they, we're tired of this bullshit. They, they conveniently, and I say this conveniently, had their videos or their. Are you here? Well, one of the, yeah, turn it off. Yeah, turn right. It. Yeah. So literally, this is the part where the collective is saying. You should be found guilty if your yes. camera's off. How's right. that? that? That's exactly it. That's exactly that? it. I'm a, hey, look, I'm only I'm only saying what I yeah. what I see is an obvious uh, well, we don't, cover we, cover we your ass. We're suspicious that they whenever right. it's a black person, they raise and have this new level right. of interaction and of aggressiveness. That you know, if you're black, they lead a new level of investigation. Then name it after you. Right. It'll be the Bennett approach. Right. <laughs> <In a minute. laughs> right. You know, hey, look, I I'm just hitting it. The way it's coming. The next topic, ex-Major League Baseball star Albert Bell arrested for indecent exposure and DUI. If that's the case, if that's the case, he's former, he's ex. Does it matter, Mario? I mean, trending up or trending down? Uh, it matters in the sense that it suggests to me a serious psychological moment. So if you have a moment at which you either... You, I need, it needs to be explained. Right. So either you were having a drug-related right. psychotic episode right. or even worse for your health, I guess, Yes. Sir. if it's not drug-related. If it's not right. drug-related, you just went crazy. Right. <laughs> right. That has a bad prognosis. Right. And, and, and a bad prognosis if you don't have an inciting event. Yeah. So if you just start going, boom, here I am. Okay. He said, and if you yeah. guys want to see a history of some incidents happening with Albert, just go to the Wikipedia page. You'll see some things that are documented for you. I'm not going to cover all that. All right. That's going to probably be trending down that right, right offhand. I think the Michael Bennett is going to trend up, and it's trending up. Especially, well, especially depending upon what the outcome of That's right. All right, next. This one is not going to trend at all, but I'm going to give – I'm going to give props to this person just by name. Montrez Harrell, L.A. Klimper. And when I say this, bench, bully, hustle, muscle, ball. Do you guys remember Dennis Rodman? 
Yes. You're not going to see a picture of this guy. I'm just letting you know. I watched the game against Toronto Raptors yesterday. It's an away game with the Clippers. There's a night and day difference when bench players come in. Most of the time, and we discuss this when we talk about Lakers and everyone else, most of the time the people that usually want to come in want to show you they can shoot the ball. That's the first thing that they do. If you ever want to see a player, I watch DeAndre Jordan because he's athletically gifted, a rebounder, and he's not a scorer the way Just go watch Montrez Harrell. If you want to see an example, take the tape for all the new NBA players coming in, playing for his size. And if you want to see hustle all over the court and literally making a name for himself, I watch as the Clippers with their starting five look like they're in slow motion. When the bench comes in, it's another level. And then Montrez is wreaking havoc. Yes. Do you trade off something because you need that go-to score? This man, probably only reason why he hasn't earned a starting position because they need bench players. So if we ever want to see an example, I wish I could show you, watch this guy play. This is one of those rare times where you go, he is wreaking havoc. He, he wants to disrupt you, and I like it. So that, that's my, for me, it's trending up. For everybody else, it may not be. All right. Let's go to Shalom if you're not. It, Ifianani, Ifianani, I'm not sure how she pronounces her name. I'll say Shalom because she is the uh, university uh, volleyball, uh, what we call booted <laughs> off the team by a coach because of her Instagram posting. And you only got a couple of pictures. You don't get to see what you want to see. She is beautiful. She is attractive. And she's taking the university, and some other people, of course, to court. Now, it's simply saying that she has filed a lawsuit against the University of Cincinnati. Coach Molly Alvey and Executive Senior Assistant Athletic Director Maggie McKinley. And her argument is, how come the other players get to show bikini, be in bikini wear, and y'all don't say anything? They're going to lose. They, they, <laughs> And imagine they're ridiculous. recruiting. Right. Imagine this coach trying to recruit. It's stupid. It's really stupid. It's really stupid. unfortunate. Uh, wow. And so, like, they're going to lose, in fact. So, I wouldn't be surprised to see the university step in. Oh, yeah. You know, because right now, the University of Cincinnati is enjoying a kind of a good streak. In terms mm-hmm. of recognition in sports, yep, and so they kind of don't probably don't want this. They probably want to expand it. Their areas in which they get acknowledged. So this is a bad one, <laughs> well, it Coach is- Molly. <laughs> and you know what? From what I understand, the way it looked even from the other reports wow. is that she had been injured. So they've had some issues with her, anyway. And it looks like that's part of the ongoing thing. Yeah, I understand. It, it look it may be other stories behind this, but I wonder if. What she's saying is what she believes or what they reported. And so I'm not sure what they reported. Yeah. Lose. yeah. The, the universe, right. I, yeah. this looks bad for university. And then, I, like I said, they have to then go out and recruit. Right. And in today's heightened world of increased racial sensitivity. Right. You know, all you got to do is have the black folks get an impression that it ain't worth going there. And it's done. And, you, and it's done. It's done. It's right. done. It's done. All right. All right. Hey, I just want to cover that in my sports. That was it. Quick in the dirty. Uh, you guys just keep hanging in there. I'll try to keep it simple. I'm out, man. Victor Allen's new sports recurring segment of the Morning Coffee with Mario show. Here, every Monday as part of the festivities, get Victor Allen's unique fan based little sports. And remember, we say to dress appropriately, sports bras and jock straps, and that's for everybody. We like to be uniform. Be good. Hot bits. Yeah. Yeah. Going longer today, but you know it's always worth it. Get ready for that moment you've been waiting for. The fourth moment. The Hot Pigs. We'll be right back. 420 Frilly. 
Take a hit. Be ready. Yeah. Since we're running a little bit long, I want to hurry up and get this done because this day's hot picks is really about influencing a market. Everybody does. It's when you hit what they call rock hard dollar, or you actually influence the market in some kind of ways to greater, greater success. And so this day we're going to do Snapchat influencers, the evolution of shifting markets and before for those of you who care I will give you some information and then we'll go in do a quick profile and then say hey okay how much impact does this particular app have and should they worry or should they be celebrating the success first of all let me give you some rundowns on snapchat simply put 71% of snapchat users are under 34 years of age Roughly 70% of the Snapchat users are female. That I was shocked about. 30% of the U.S. millennial internet users use Snapchat. People under the age of 25 use Snapchat 40 minutes on average every day, more than Instagram's latest stat for same demographic. 50% of male college students share selfies on Snapchat. The number is higher in female college students, 77% to be precise. 45% of Snapchat users are aged are age between 18 and 24. Snapchat reaches 11% of the total U.S. digital population. If you feel like you're left out, you're probably somewhere not in these stats. So that <laughs> Only if you're too old to be chasing ass. No, 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 Everybody no, no, no. who's chasing ass is using wait, this, and then, wait, That's what the demographics say. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that there's no education involved in this? I'm saying what is amazing to me, first of all, is the <laughs> fact that the women use it more because there are certain biases. Right. I just was looking at the biases on the gaming and it's flip flop the right. other way. Right. But it's so interesting. Those all of these things are changing with big, wonderful information that these this is one dominated by women. Yes. The brothers who are going there are looking for what? <laughs> women. No, no, with the, so the, when you're chasing ass, when you're no. chasing. They're chasing personality. Oh, they're chasing interaction. They're chasing yes. mindset. Dedication. They're to looking the... to have bonding. Right. 
Right. Same thing. Something new. They're chasing something that we weren't chasing. Right, man. Hey, so look. New chase. Look. We're talking about affecting markets. We, you're in the day and age where, you, I mean, if you were even under 34, you go 20 years ago and you're under 34, he says, I'm changing the market. He says, you know, what, you got royalty in your family? You got people in oil? You can't change. Right now, things are changing. So let me do this. I'm going to quickly go over the profiles to let you know from the who are the, what we call the popular influencers who have Snapchat profiles that are banging up to date. And so it's going to be a quick run through and then we're going to get to it. Going right over to DJ Khalid. He has almost 22,000 posts and he has 6.1 million followers. And just to keep it on point here, these are numbers dating back to 2017. Didn't get all the accuracy I could for this year. So I'm just recognizing the totality of up until last year. So I'm pretty sure when you guys go to these profiles immediately, you'll see different numbers. I'm just letting you know, letting you know what the official stats is for 2017 and only through the third quarter, I believe. All right, let's go to the next. The next, oh, Carly Kloss. Carly Kloss, six foot two giraffe. That's what she calls herself. She has over 2,300 posts, 6.7 million followers. There's a reason that there these are influencers. I won't waste a lot of time. You guys will go, have to go follow them. And if you follow them, you will learn. A little promotion here. Next up, 2,500 posts for Black China. You want to know how many followers she has as of 2017? 12.6 million. Okay. Basically, cosmetic. She's pushing the whole cosmetic thing. She's book me. If you book me, I'll come. All right. So let's keep it as simple. Let's go to the next. The next, oh, Chrissy. Chrissy Taken. 3,000 posts. 13 million followers. Making America great again. Now, I wonder if she means the same thing as Donald Trump. I'm not quite sure. I think it's a whole different thing. Let's go to the next. Okay, Emrata. For those of you, you already know what that means. Emrata, that's Emily Radikowski, model, actress, activist. Works at the Hollywood Reporter News, the whole thing. She loves and the post news. Man, this woman has she a love, love affair her with her herself. And she's and I in a cool way to me. Right. I'm I not, kinda I'm really not mad. appreciate her. She the way she explains it and yeah. I'm 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 digging it. Hey look, we're we're talking about people who are influencing the market, not just necessarily right. Oh, I got a lot of followers. Next up, man, kind of shocking on this next one. Got 3,241 posts. King Bach, 13.8 million followers. Actor, director, producer. He has his YouTube channel. This man is doing something with video. I'm learning about him. Some of you guys don't get mad at me. I should have heard about him already. Wow, got to give it to him. He's, he's banging it out. All right, let's go to the next. Well, it's kind of obvious you guys are going to say, okay. Amanda Cerny, 1,335 posts, and she's got 16 million followers. Actress, director, queen of my own fantasy. That's how she is. You got to hit her management if you want to touch her. So let you know she's influencing a market. Let's go over to who I call the queen. You just go, Gigi Hadid. 2,400 posts, 34.6 million followers, IMG models worldwide, strength gangster, gangster in the house. Stop right there, you guys. Now, Mario, out of these, without you going any further, somebody's affecting change out of this group. Snapchat change. Out of the, out of the individuals we see, who do you think it is? Well, to me, affecting change as opposed to just being a Wow, phenomena is different. Right. That means leveraging right. your celebrity behind causes. Right. So that's that there, there's a whole range of that. I don't know some of the characters here. Just go up and just pick going. one. But I think that's what we have to do with King Box, Cerny, Emrata, you know, Chrissy Teigen, you know, uh, Black China. You know, I just, I just wonder, Vic, and I don't know. I know DJ Khalid, and I know that Chrissy Teigen have resp- 
responded politically right. to social issues. Yeah. Okay. Well, you do. Hey, look, those are good selections. I don't, again, the other ones may have them. Yeah. I don't know. I must. I'm so busy taken by their beauty. <laughs> You know, like, Wait a minute. Uh, like Emily Radical. I'm okay. just saying, I'm not so much. I, I understand. I wasn't paying attention to their policy. We're trying to get you a new focus. Right. King <laughs> Bach, he may be. I don't know. All right. Well, let me tell you what we do know. Let me just give you some information. If you roll down or scroll up, I'm sorry, Mario, all the way down, Chrissy Teigen. There's a symbiotic relationship here. Kylie, Rihanna, and now Chrissy. You know the story about Kylie. She affects the market by $1.3 billion value. I guess I was my comic relief. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Rihanna had something that happened. I'm just going to explain to you briefly because most of you guys who are in Snapchat already know it. Just over a week after it, its stock prices dipped following a controversial Snapchat ad that made reference to Rihanna's assault at the hands of Chris Brown. Snapchat loses another celebrity influencer, Chrissy Teigen. She, along with Rihanna, says, no longer will I use this. Chrissy Teigen announced Saturday, just this past Saturday, via Twitter, and I, uh, when I say it a week, a week ago, um, that she will no longer be using the app due in part to the ad and cited the latest update, which has received widespread criticism as another reason for her departure because she's saying my people can't find me with you guys' upgrades. So this is that part where they go, number one, it was stupid what Snapchat did. I saw their promotion on this ad. I, I can't even imagine who was thinking. They, they, they posted it this way. This is their way of trying to get people to come in and have a lot more interaction. What would you, would you rather see Rihanna get hit <laughs> or Chris Brown something something? And I said, you can't be that stupid. So that has started this whole chain. Rihanna already said, oh, no, I'm out. She dropped. And you already got the report of how many millions affected. I'm not sure what Chrissy is doing on effect, but it's losing another brand influencer. And that itself is going to be a market impact. Mario, let me ask you this. Think Snapchat is worried about this? Oh, hell yeah, they're worried. Okay. That's yeah, they're hella worried. Yes. Big. Because... Most of them are positioning themselves to be bought. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know if they've been bought yet, but that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they look, and, and let me, you know, hey, let me just say this quick insert. Congratulations to Dropbox. Went public a few days ago. That doesn't mean I like you because you guys took away some of my storage capacity. I'm not mad. <laughs> when you get greedy, you get needy. But on this one, I'm going to be watching Chrissy as it relates to, because remember now, Snapchat is used 70% by women. And if they seem that there's some abuse being taken place in favor of something that looks so obvious, I wonder will they report, which they haven't done so far with Chrissy, the value of any impact she made. And, it, and to me, since you got a lot of these outlets that want to stay away because they're in back, what they call the backdoor relationships, I didn't find no money value they attributed to her. So that either means that she's not an influencer or she is. Exactly. It. That's all. Right. So here it is, Mario. If you're going to go do your uh, Snapchat, who are you going to follow first? Tegan and <laughs> but, Rihanna. But her clothes, both of their accounts, done. Oh, then I might not get me. I don't snap. So nobody in here you want to follow? <laughs> you don't want to follow? You know what? See, I'm too old. I'm not chasing anymore. You don't see some of y'all still chasing. Come on, man. I'm not chasing. So that means I ain't going to the chasing spots because I ain't chasing. Right. So now if I was chasing, I'd be totally be different. Snapchat. Right. So, so, okay. I would say. I wouldn't care that they left. I think about that other 70. I, I was. Here, here's my suggestion. Follow King Bach. Why? That's right. Closer to know. what he's, he's doing. King Actor, Bach. producer, the whole thing. Follow him, man. He, 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 he's Follow good for King it. Bach. I'm out, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my Thank y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to today's show. Wonderful show indeed. It's not, sometimes we do run a little long, but that's only when it's hot and heavy and good. Remember, we got the full programming this week. Come in to here tomorrow, Tuesday night, the quiet storm. Don't forget Friday, we got the full agenda. It's going to be hot and heavy. Thank you to the Facebook folks, to the people at Twitch, Twitter, Periscope, to all 
all the bitches, friends, and my buddies, and parts out there on social media. We say to you, peace! First off, I'm not your regular dude. I must move like a young MC. Yeah, soda, that will be me. Got me thinking about putting down the mic one day. Then I get some more love. Thanks for the love you gotta play. Hey, what can I say? I'm a Leo to the finish, man. I love God, so my faith won't diminish me. Once I step up to the mic, I speak truth. Hip hop wasn't designed to expose the black youth, but somewhere along the lines, we dropped the ball game. Yeah. I mean, that man in the mirror, yeah, that ball dude. But now I'm back to right the wrongs of my past world. So let me walk this off my list like my name's Earl. Articulate my thoughts clearly like Professor Laz. Do you remember Rap City with this year and less? I'm looking at the front door, bless the main source. You fool, yeah, wait till I hit you with the main course. I was spitting when you was a kid. You doing what I did, you know I still got it Why you brag about it? I be on the solo Making my money's grow residual I'm individual, nobody's got my DNA I was spitting when you was a kid You doing what I did, you know I still got it Why you brag about it? I be on the solo Making my money's grow residual I'm individual, nobody's got my DNA Like my raps, but really I write songs. I like to do it like this once in a while to show some versatility and make you all smile. It's been a long time coming, I know I feel it too. The more I take a break, it's like the more I break through. With my time and space, boy funk, I'm on point. You bless this microphone every time I anoint the pen, the pad. I face the bad head on escape inside the music. See my diaries, a song and song till I write my next verse. Then I go again into the studio. I feel like I gotta flow again. This ain't just music to me. It's like my Recipe. To be honest, it's more creative tranquility. This ain't just music to me, it's like my recipe. To be honest, it's more creative tranquility. I was spitting when you was a kid, you doing what I did, you know I still got it. Why you brag about it? I be on the solo, making my money's grow residual. I'm individual, nobody's got my DNA. I was spitting when you was a kid, you doing what I did, you know I still got it. Why you brag about it? I be on the solo, making my money's grow residual. I'm individual, nobody's got my DNA. They say they get me, I don't think they ever got me. My name's Kowalski, but they call me Kawasaki. Kawasaki. I'm a line of funds, but in real life, I'm more like Chachi. I'm a cola, I told you, I'm funky like granola. Bars, can't you see that I'm a star? Who pumps his own gas in the cold really fast? As I pass on your gold in stash. I'd rather make my own money, not advance me loan money. No. I was spitting when you was a kid. You doing what I did, you know I still got it. Why you brag about it? I be on the solo, making my money's grow residual. I'm individual, nobody's got my DNA. I was spitting when you was a kid. You doing what I did, you know I still got it. Why you brag about it? I be on the solo, making my money's grow residual. I'm individual, nobody's got my DNA.